Modern critics will describe a paradox at the heart of classic Sonic's game design. This series, they say, is supposed to be about going fast. So why are you so constantly punished for doing that? The game enables you, encourages you, wants you to accelerate to breakneck speeds, then stabs you in the back for doing it with things that you couldn't possibly see coming, a problem that's made even worse by the camera being so zoomed in. How is anybody supposed to react to this crap? I've seen it argued that this violates the basic tenets of good game design. If any of that describes your experience with Sonic, or if you found that these games have just never quite clicked, this video is for you. Because I believe there is magic in this design, it's just the kind of approach that you need to find that magic is pretty out of step with modern expectations. Games nowadays, especially single player AAA games, tend to be judged by how long they are. How much time is it going to take me before I can see everything, experience the whole story, and get to the end? A full price game that could be finished in just a few hours would be raked over the coals nowadays. Heck, short $10 indie games still are, so spoiled are we with content. Sonic was born in a very different industry. Back in the rip, the roaring, olden days of print media, one of the core metrics of game reviews, right alongside graphics and sound design, was a little something called replay value. And like a lot of aspects of old school game design, it was this way because it had to be. In the NES era, only the beefiest RPGs could hope to last a skilled player more than a few hours, so it didn't matter so much how long a game would take, what mattered was how long it would last. This is the industry where Sonic was born, and this is where the classic formula excels. That inspiration came from observation. Here's Super Mario Bros. World 1-1. There are hundreds of videos out there breaking down how brilliantly designed this stage is for the way it gently, invisibly teaches a new player everything they need to know about how this game works, and how video games work, even if you've never played a game before. But what happens on your second playthrough? Or your third, or your fourth, or your fifth time through Super Mario Bros.? There was no such thing as a save file back then, at least not on consoles. Meaning that every time you turned on the console, or got a game over, you were going to be playing 1-1. And yet, somehow, against all odds, it was still fun to play! Because the better you got at the game, the faster you got through the level! So Sonic Team decided, what if we made a game that was just as easy to pick up and play as Mario, but was designed with intent to take advantage of this? If players will, by necessity, play through these zones over and over again trying to reach the end, what if that inevitable process would be rewarded? What if we could make a game where as your skill grew, that second, or third, or hundredth time through a zone would be exponentially more rewarding than your first? where obstacles that once seemed unfair or insurmountable eventually become a spectacular display not of what Sonic can do, but what you can do. Unfortunately, what was one of the series' biggest strengths has become something of an albatross, something that modern gamers often don't even notice. Because modern games, even modern platformers, simply aren't designed this way, and players aren't conditioned to expect it. When you fall, you don't have to climb the whole mountain again. You can, but you don't have to. The primary challenge of this, and most games, is to get through it once. The idea of doing it again, but better, is tertiary at best. But, and I can't emphasize this enough, this is the wrong approach to take with a Sonic game. You can just lean on the generous ring system and barely struggle through until you get to the end. But if you consider the game done at that point, it's no wonder you find it unfulfilling. That'd be like beating half the set list of a Guitar Hero game on easy, or playing every stage of a WarioWare game once and thinking that you're done with it. The real longevity and the real depth come out of skill mastery. In 1991, developers could take two things for granted. First, the gamers were unusually good at reacting quickly, because after all, that was one of the fundamental skills most games were built on. And second, especially given how much of the console gaming market was made up of kids, that players were going to be replaying your game a lot. But that was almost 30 years ago. Gaming today appeals to a much wider audience of people who enjoy games for a much wider variety of reasons, many of which couldn't even be conceived of back then. So the idea that you might just keep plugging away at something that's frustrating you this much is completely foreign to some players now, especially when everybody's got a backlog a mile long. Now the most common solution to old school difficulty is save states and rewind features. That's not necessarily a bad thing. 
It means the replay value is less emphasized than ever before, but hey, the Game Genie was basically the only reason I could beat anything at first. There's nothing wrong with playing a game in a way that makes it the most fun for you, and the majority of challenging games nowadays give you the option to do just that. With that assist mode turned off, Celeste is easily more challenging than anything Sonic's ever done. But this kind of struggle till you make it game design won't appeal to everybody. Nonetheless, it is pretty telling that back in the day, the reason Sonic's detractors gave for not liking it wasn't that it was too at odds with itself or too frustrating. No, it was almost the opposite. Until, like, 2009, the most common criticism I saw about these games was that they were too easy, that they were all spectacle and no substance, that Sonic was bad because it could be finished too fast. So before it was too easy, now it's too hard. The narrative is kind of flipped, and in both cases it comes down to a lack of appreciation for replay value. But then again, it might make sense that those detractors were there so early. Even throughout the 16-bit era, the wheel was already turning away from replayability, and toward longer, more expansive adventures that could never reasonably be completed in a single setting, no matter how good you got. It could be argued that this design was already a little outdated and a little out of focus as early as 1994 when Sonic 3 added a save feature, and Sonic has struggled to resolve that divide ever since. Between a character whose superpower demands a game that's built for replay value, and a player base that increasingly doesn't see the value in replays. This was my first video game, and it seemed like every other zone just walled me with some nightmarishly challenging difficulty spike. Every time that happened, I had to start over. And every time I did, without even really trying to, I got a little better. I got a little faster. I sharpened my skill to the point where eventually, not only did I get over those walls, I busted through them. And being able to feel that difference through gameplay, between where I'd started and where I'd ended up, felt so amazing and so rewarding that I'm still replaying it 25 years later. So that's my advice. If you're someone who's ever enjoyed a Sonic game to a point, don't just keep banging your head into a stage that's no fun. Ignore the save file. Start over and go back to those earlier stages that you did enjoy. Approach it differently. Maybe it's like backtracking in a Metroid game. Except instead of your character getting stronger and more capable, you do. Try different things, look for different paths, play as different characters, get yourself more acclimated to the physics and the flow of the game design, and by the time you make it back to that zone that gave you trouble, you'll be a lot more ready for it. Oh, and press down while moving to spin into a ball. That really helps. I hope none of this has come across like I'm just telling you to get good. Getting good is important, but the process of getting good should be mostly enjoyable to you, and the accomplishment you get when you are good should be worth it. If Sonic still doesn't sound like your cup of tea, that's okay. I just hope you walk away from this with a better understanding of why other people do enjoy it. There is a reason the legacy of these games has endured. There is magic in Sonic's game design, and it's the magic that's infinitely more rewarding when you earn it. I hope you enjoyed this more short-form, old-school take on a geek critique. I might do some more of these occasionally, just to help fill in the gaps between seasons. Also, I want to give a huge shout-out to my buddy John for asking me this question, and to Chris Alcock for writing an article I'll link down below. These two things were definitely the catalyst that led me here, and I gotta thank Chris in particular for letting me steal his Paradox at the Heart line. You're the man, Taskbaugh! Thank you for watching, and until next time, you keep geeking, I'll keep critiquing.